and lighting us on egg hunting. Please welcome Mr. Vincey Suera to this incredible journey of exploit development. In this talk, we'll talk about dissecting egg hunter on exploit development. I would like to thank the staff of the CIACOM for this opportunity to be here today with you. So, for those who don't know me, I am a security researcher and pen tester for over 16 years. I am a professor and academic coordinator at FIAP University in Brazil. I am a cyber warfare expert by the Brazilian Army. I have some certifications like USP, CH, and others. I am a CVA holder and exploit writer. I am a member of DC5551, the largest DCG on Brazil, and DEFCON Hacking Village. And recently, I am joined at HINAC Project. Hacking is not a crime. Today, we talk about binary exploitation. And for that we will understand what is exploit, what types of exploit, let's remember a little bit about the fundamental concepts of buffer overflow, CA exploitation, what are egg hunters and what steps to develop and exploit using egg hunter. But first, why exploit development? An exploit is a piece of software, a chunk of data or a sequence of commands that takes advantage of a bug vulnerability. That is, an exploit is an automated way to exploit a vulnerability. And, how to use the term automated, we need to understand the concepts of binary exploitation and what type of exploitation is used to build the code that will automate the exploitation that is or exploit. I know that for some I am not saying anything new so far, but it is interesting to conceptualize the issues so that we can reach or go. Going a little deeper into the exploit team, we will understand a little and more about the types of exploits. According to ExploitDB, one of the largest repositories of public exploits, there are basically four types of exploits. Exploits for web applications, exploits for denial of service, which can be either local or remote, exploits for remote attacks, which generally grant unauthorized access to any system or application, and exploits for local vulnerabilities, that generally grant privileged access to operating system for exploiting kernel or end user permission flows. How true! There are severe types of vulnerabilities for an attacker. The best option is always to exploit vulnerabilities that grant him unauthorized assets, either locally or remotely. So, and one of the most interesting forms of exploitation is through the exploitation of binaries, that is, exploiting the flow of execution of certain applications that allow attacker unauthorized access to a system. And when we talk about binary exploitation, we are talking about buffer overflow, and more specifically on this talk about the stack-based overflow. According to Wikipedia, a stack buffer overflow occurs when a program writes to a memory address on the program's call stacks outside of the intended data structure, which use usually a fixed land buffer. Stack buffer overflow bugs are caused when a program writes more data 
to a buffer located on the stack than what is actually allocated for that buffer. So, there are several types of stack buffer overflow exploitations, such as vanilla EP, override, CH, egg hunters, ASLR, safe SEH, stack cookies, Unicode restrictions, and much more. So, in, in this talk, you comment on stack overflow exploits using CH and egg hunter. Well, so far we have been able to remember some important concepts about buffer overflow and we can go even deeper into the subject. Let's go! To execute arbitrary code, an attacker put his shellcode in the available buffer space created by the program in memory. What if the shellcode requires more space than the available space in the buffer? This is where the egg hunter technique is useful. Egg hunter is a small piece of shellcode which searches for an actual bigger shellcode which the attacker was not able to fit in the available buffer space and redirect execution flow to it. The egg hunter code searches for a egg which is unique string of 80 bytes made up for combining of two tag. A tag is a 4 byte unique string. Usually, attackers consider using strings like egg, 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 two eggs, or any other strings which is unique enough to search in memory. An egg is formed by combining two tag to make it more unique so that it won't come across itself while searching in a memory. The egg is placed just before the shell code and the egg hunter code is placed in the small available buffer space while exploiting the overflows. So, for this talk, I used Vroom Server, which is an ideal Windows Server vulnerable application for buffer overflow exploits and widely used for those studying versus certifications like OSE. The Vroom Server is available at these links below. But before we go any further, let's analyze the Vroom Server code. Note that is building NC and has an exception handler, right? Certain programs when created account for errors in execution by instituting errors handlers, which it will allow a program to exit or stop gracefully when an error occurs. According to Coral, the best name of binary exploitation ever, Windows has a default CH structured exception handler which will catch exceptions. If your Windows catch an exception, you see uh, has encountered a problem and needs to close pop-up like this. This is often the result of the full handler kicking in. It is obvious that in order to write stable software, one should try to use development language specific exception handlers and only rely on the Windows default CH as a last resort. When using language EH, the necessary links and calls to exception handling codes are generated in accordance with the underlying OS. And when no exception handlers are used, or when the available exception handlers cannot process the exceptions, the Windows CH will be used on a handler exception filter. So, in the event an error or a legal instruction occurs, the application will get a chance to catch the exception and do something with it. If no exception handler is defined in the application, the OS takes over, catches the exceptions, shows the pop-up, asking you to send error to report to MS.
for example. For this part, we will exploit the daemon command from Vroom server. At the top of the main data block of the application's main function or TV thread environment block or TV thread information block, a pointer to the top of the CA chain is placed. The CA chain is often called the FS chain as well. So, on Intel machines, when looking at this assembly of the CA code, we will see an instruction to move the work. PTR for FS. This ensures that the exception handler is set up for the thread and we, will, and we will be able to catch errors when they occur. The upcode for this instruction is 64A180. If you cannot find this upcode, the application thread may not have an exception handler at all. The bottom of the CA chain is indicated by HFs. This will trigger an improper termination of the program and the OS handler will kick in. In other words, the payload must do the following things. Causing an exception without an exception you won't kick in. Overwrite the pointer to the next CA record with some code, overwrite the CA handler with a pointer to an instruction that will bring your back to next CA and execute your design code. The shell code should be directly after the overwriting CA handler. To make it easy, let's see this visually. We need to cause an exception, overwrite the pointer to the next CEH record and overwrite the CA handler with a pointer. So, I will not explain in detail fuzzing because the fuzzing technique is a basic for all types of binary exploitation through buffer overflow. In this pocket, using this bull fuzzing script and the money debugger against our target, we will obtain the value of our EEP. Pay special attention to the use Shift F7, Shift F8, Shift F9 to pass exception to program message at the bottom of the screen. We see that ECX and EBP have been overwritten with B charts. This seems to align with the third fuzzing payload sent with buffers when you look through your command line outputs on your remote attacker. So let's use Shift F9 to pass an exception to the program. Now now, this is looking more familiar to us. EP has been overwritten by our B values. You will also notice that the registers we previously were able to overwrite have been XRDs again themselves and therefore zeroed out. If you read the current materials, this is explanatory as a defense mechanism to stop malicious payloads using these overwriting registers to jump straight to shellcodes. In fact, the coral materials specify that the very techniques that we are using learning with this point is a direct response and bypass to these very measures. But why does EP now hold for 2, for 2, for 2, for 2? Let's go back to the pointer of the pointer in your fuzzing when we first crash in the program and go to view and then ch and we get this. So when we initialized over forward the program, we are able to override both the pointer of the next ch hacker and the pointer to the exception handler. So, since EEP is simple telling the program the address of the next instruction, 
which is case is specified by the CH component, which we just verified both subcomponents are current for two, for two, for two, for two. The EP is for two, for two, for two, for two. At this point, we are done with buffers and need to verify that we can override the CH component with an exploit script. So, and now we can get our X. This is the basic mechanism of exploiting a stack buffer overflow using Egg Hunter. When a stack overflow occurs at some point, it overrides the, the EP register, EP points to the next instruction to be executed. Then we should make EP point to ESP, where our shell code will be present. In some cases, shell code might be just above the ESP. In that case, we need to jump back and execute shell code, which is egg hunter. In this case, which searches for egg tag in the entire memory and execute actual shell code, which is next egg. To perform this, we will need to, to the following. Cause an exception by overflowing the application buffers. The overflow also overrides the CH components. Replace a pop pop red instruction in the current CA handler others. The pop pop red instructions place code execution at the point at the pointer pointing towards of the next CCH record. This address has been overwritten with instructions to jump forward 6 bytes. After jumping forward 6 bytes, the instruction at this location tells execution to jump backwards 7 68 bytes. After jumping 7 68 bytes, we will slide down a nope slit to our shellcode at the end of our nope slit buffer and finally the program execute our shell code. Instead of jumping back 7, 68 bytes with our pop ECX decrement, 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 jumping to ECX, we could also simply squeeze an egg hunter into our C buffer that we are jumping 6 bytes forward into. Here is what we look at like sitting on in the pointer to the next CCH record which at the time was filled with B values. So Mona again shows us how awesome it is when we use it to generate egg hunter shell codes along with a tag argument that will prepend for main payload shell codes. We can use the Mona egg minus T EGGH, which will output us this nice little egg hunter dot txt. So Putting all together, we now can put in everything we have seen so far in a script to develop or exploit. Let's see how this looks on our exploits. We need to create an egg hunter variable in our exploit script. We create an egg variable or egg tag. We complete our exploit so that it is sending this order. E values, egg, shell codes, NCH, CH, egg hunter, and C values. That's it. This is the beginning of our exploit where you are defining the variables. In addition to the targets, targets IP and port, where are defining our CH, NCH, and Egg Hunter. The same we managed to obtain through Mono.
Here we define our egg tag in our shell code. We code use a MS Venom shell code or generate yours manually. And now we can create our buffer structure, which is formed by the sequence we have seen before. Evalus, egg, shell code, NCH, CH, egg hunters, and C values. And now, so we have a functional exploit in which we can obtain an authorized remote access to targets through the exploitation of a binary VOM server using the technique of CH and egg hunter. This is a technique that requires practice and a simulation of the concepts presented to develop a functional exploit. So, that is it guys. I hope I have shared something useful to you. My goal was to present the CH and Egg Hunter subjects is in a practical way so that you can reproduce it, the steps and carry out not only exploitations but also be able to develop or exploits mainly. I appreciate the opportunity and there are my contacts for those who want to share. Thank you.